Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a really fun one for you. As always, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're new here. Over half of the people who have been watching my videos aren't subscribed. It only takes you a second, and I do appreciate it a lot. I'm on my way to 300k, and I've got some big plans for 2023. Anyway, looking at the matchup here, uh, I'm of course working with the squad of absolute never used misfits, whereas my opponent has some pretty scary threats. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the match here and get it going. So... He's going to go ahead and decide to lead off with the Lycanroc as I toss out young Weevil Underwood, everybody's least favorite Gen 9 Pokemon, the Spidops, but I believe in the boy. So, my plan is to go ahead and get up the Sticky Web. Looking in the face of a Rock Dog is kind of scary being a bug, uh, but I'm Focus Ashed anyway, so I know I can take a hit as he actually goes for the Acceleroc here, and that is going to not even knock me to my Sash, and that allows me to go ahead and spread my seed on his side of the field. Um, so the Sticky Web is going to be super important for this team. Um, and now I'm thinking, you know what, he's obviously just probably going to go for that again, as I can just nice get a nice little switch into the cloth, bring my Rock-type ass in, and we're just a couple of Rocky boys having a time over here. And I'm thinking maybe I can even start setting up the cloth, which would be amazing. So I come in and I take a little bit of damage, and ideally I'd like to start setting up some Swords Dances potentially, but I just end up going for the knockoff here expecting a switch. However, I completely forgot that Lycanroc now gets access to close combat, and that sends my cloth directly into the deepest pits of hell. Uh, so that is a misplay for sure on my end, and now I'm down my big meaty claws. So uh, that sucks, but you know, misplays happen, and I, I haven't played against a Lycanroc in forever. So now I'm thinking, okay, at least this does open an opportunity for you boy, and that is the honey-baked ham ready to get some shit going. I'm thinking, I switch into this thing. I am Terra Ghost, so if he, I can bait in the close combat, go ahead and turn into a ghost type and start potentially trying to set up with the stuffed cheek. So, I am going to terrestrialize here and go for the stuffed cheeks. If you're unfamiliar with how stuffed cheeks works, it essentially just uses up your berry um, while also giving you a sharp defense boost. So, I have the Salic Berry, which is going to give me a speed boost, and I get that defense boost to try to power up um, my body presses. So, I put the old ghosty boy on my head, and Mrs. Piggy is ready to get some shit going. He does go for the close combat, of course. Does not affect me because I am now dead, and uh, the stuffed cheeks, I'm just out here having a buffet. So I eat the berry, raises my defense sharply, which is great for this thing's longevity, um, and I do get that speed boost just in case with the sticky web I was still slower than something, something crazy. So now I just decide to go for the body press here as he hits me with one last Acceleroc just to get some chip damage here. Uh, but with that defense boost, I'm looking pretty nice, and the goodest boy has now been hit. His, his ass just got honey baked. So <laughs> the critical hit did not matter there as down goes the Lycanroc. So that's a pretty big threat out of the way. Uh, priority is scary. And now he gets a switch into whatever he would like. He decides to go into the Crackhead uh, Primeape here. Annihilate comes in, uh, takes the Sticky Web, and I'm believing I should be able to outspeed easily here unless it's like some crazy Scarf set. Uh, with my speed boost and that I am able to outspeed, I do have the Terra Blast. So I can hit him with a nice little stab ghost move, hoping for a KO. Unfortunately, somehow by the power of Christ, he's able to live with 10 HP and fires off a Rage Fist. Now Miss Piggy says, call an ambulance, bitch, but not for me, because I actually live it with 1 HP. Which is actually insane. That defense boost really helped out. And now I can just fire off one last little Terra Blast, and that is going to take care of the Annihilate. Which is, again, one of the biggest threats on his team taken care of. So... Who would have thought Oink alone was out here making shit happen? So that is why we play the game, boys. So now he gets to switch into the Talonflame. Unfortunately, with this thing at full HP, his Gale Wings ability does allow Brave Bird to be a priority move. Uh, so unfortunately, Honey Bakes, you know, reign has, has come to an end here. So uh, Brave Bird does take care of me, but I am proud of the Oink alone. This thing is a super fun set to use. Not a lot of people are expecting it right now, and it's just kind of kind of fun to use. So. Um, what's good now is he takes some recoil damage, he's no longer going to get any priority action going on, and now I have to figure out what wants to deal with this thing. And I'm thinking, i probably go right into Pama, right? Because this thing, with its Iron Fist and Punching Glove, going to be able to do a shit ton, a ton of damage to, like, everything uh, with my elemental punching move, so... With the old Punch and Pika, I can just go right for the Thunder Punch here, as he actually ends up setting up a Tailwind, so... Tailwind is a little bit interesting. I did not expect that because he still has the sticky web up on his side of the field. So now there's all sorts of crazy speed shit going on and it's confusing. But I knock him out with a critical hit. Uh, a little bit unnecessary there as I believe Thunder Punch. With that boxing glove plus the iron fist and plus this thing's a beast, that boy's going down. So uh, now they get a free switch into the Gardevoir and comes in, takes a speed drop, but then still behind the Tailwind. And Palmot does not have much that wants to deal with this thing. But what I do have is the Dunsparce. Sorry, the da dun sparse. He's got an extra segment in his body. He's a whole new he's a whole new butt plug out here. So I decided to go into this thing because I don't have much to deal 
uh, with this Gardevoir. I do know that I have, you know, decent HP and pretty solid bulk to where all I really need to do to this thing is kind of chip it to range where it can be knocked out later. So they just go for the Psychic, of course, on the Palmot. Uh, I do take less than half from that and then plus leftovers guaranteed uh, to be able to take one more of these. I have a couple different options with this boy. I could either go for the Glare uh, or I just decide I'm going to go right for the Earthquake. I expect potentially a switch, which is why I don't go for the Headbutt. Uh, Earthquake is the safest option for me here because it guarantees that I get chip on this thing if they do stay in. Uh, I just basically know that now Squawk can finish that thing off um, since it's got some chip on it, guaranteed. So, uh, unfortunately, you know, the plug's not going to be able to do too much here as I just kind of stay and take Psychics all day. But what I did need to do was just basically get that chip and I suppose, you know, Sparse, you've, you've done your best. And, you know, that's it's all I can ask of you, little guy. So the Tailwind Peter's out. Now I get a free switch into Elvis. And I'm thinking, I wish that I had Protect on this thing, which is why I, I kind of needed the Dunsparce play there for the chip. Because if I had Protect, I can guarantee activate the Guts. However, I do not. But this thing is in range uh, to just go down to a Brave Bird. So at this point, uh, Squawkabilly's looking pretty solid for me here. I'm able to take care of that thing with a Brave Bird. Uh, now the flame, uh, flame Orb will activate. I get that Guts boost because, again, I am just an, a knockoff Swallow over here with a cool haircut. And now he is down to, I believe, just Cloyster and Gengar. So I'm hoping we can make some stuff happen. He does decide to go into the Oyster here. Now here's where I expect 100% for him to click Ice Shard. Because if this thing is not Focus Sash, a Facade brings it to easy range for the, when a Mach Punch would kill from Pomot. So I'm thinking, here's my plan. I'm going to go ahead and switch into the Spide Ops. I've been saving this boy for some Death Fodder for some time now. I come in on an Ice Shard, and then I can get the matchup with Pomot against that thing to either Thunder Punch uh, or Mach Punch, whatever is needed. So, uh, in comes Weevil, just to go ahead and die, like the freaking little buggy boy he is. And he is actually going to end up going for the Terra. Unfortunately, we have not quite seen their Terra yet. And this old big old vagina is going to end up turning into a dragon, which is not ideal. Because uh, now I don't have <laughs> a whole lot to touch this thing. And as you'll see in a moment here, he actually is going to end up going for the Shell Smash instead of the Ice Shard, which is obviously the good play. He predicts the switch there, goes for the Shell Smash, uh, which is a solid play because now that puts this thing to the point where um, it is extremely scary to my team. It actually is going to be able to, with that Dragon typing, take, you know, mock Punches. And uh, this Cloyster is a threat, I swear to God. It does not matter which generation of Pokemon we are playing. This thing is always going to be an extremely powerful Pokemon. So... Weevil does go down there. I try to go for Sucker Punch, of course, with the priority Ice Shard. He's, he's going to be able to outspeed everything and take care of me. So the late game Cloyster can get to you. There's not really much that I could have gone for there. I probably should have stayed in, went for the facade. It would have been the safest or the best play, seeing how things, you know, kind of played out. But I definitely made some misplays, and I'm, 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 working on this, I'm working on this squad a little bit. There's, you know, some limitations. So the Ice Shard does take care of the Squawk ability, and now I'm just down to... Uh, the Pomot, who does not have, you know, the greatest the greatest time here, even with my, my punching glove. I'm not going to be able to uh, do too much with the mock Punch, and ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be their game. So I thought this was still, regardless, a fun match. I'm having, you know, a really fun time using this team. Um, I actually ended up going for the Ice ice Punch, but with the Ice Gold Spear, he's still faster with that Shell Smash. And uh, down goes Punch and Pika. So, again, that's the end of the game. Thank you guys very much for watching. I... Sometimes it's the way Pokemon goes. You know, this is the game we play, and I'm having fun doing it regardless. So leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and leave a comment letting me know which type of Pokemon you'd like to see me use. I can, I'm can, i trying to build teams with a lot of stuff that hasn't been used lately and having a lot of fun with it. So thank you guys very much. I'll see you next time.